What's going on, guys? Welcome back. All right, so today we're going to continue to look at um, how to analyze nonfiction text. And this time we're going to look at tone versus mood. Tone versus mood. And so tone, and I, I try to come up with creative, clever ways to help you remember. So tone starts with a T. And again, I take my notes in different colors to, to help you or to help me organize my thoughts. You can do that. You don't necessarily have to. But tone starts with a T or it is the author. The tone has to do with the author. All right. The person that writes. The person that writes the book. Okay, writes the book or the text. So the author, mood, mood, starts with the M or is me, the reader. All right, so tone. T, the author, mood, me, M, me. And this is the reader's field. So tone deals with the author, mood deals with the reader. So tone versus mood. And we have to, we look at tone versus mood because identifying Identifying tone and mood. So being able to identify both, how the uh, identifying both tone and mood um, helps to understand and analyze the text. All right, identifying tone and mood helps understand and analyze the text. And so we're going to go back. We're going to go back. We identified that tone discusses or, or tone has to do with the author. Mood has to deal with you, me, the reader. But so tone, tone is the author's, this is the author's feelings. Or author's attitude, I'm sorry. about the subject in which they're writing. All right, the author's attitude about a subject, all right? And you have to get, you get here through inferencing. So you make an inference and you make that inference by looking at author's word choice. Which we will talk about more. We're going to look at more author's word choice uh, and language. And these two things kind of go together. Because you're making your inference based off. Let me draw a better arrow than that. So you're making your inferences based off the author's uh, word choice and language. And so some examples, some examples some examples of the author's tone uh, would be serious. They could be serious about a subject. Uh, it could be Encouraging. Encouraging. So you can have serious, you can have encouraging, um, playful. Playful, uh, paranoid. They could be paranoid about a subject. Okay? So the author can have multiple 
moods. Um, and you, you infer how the author feels because the author isn't going to come out and just say. Uh, but you make those inferences based on uh, how the author constructs the text. What words do they use? How do they use those words? Uh, what do they reference? And that's going to allow you to determine how the author feels about the text in which they are writing. All right, so now we go back to Mood. We're going to go to Mood. Mood deals with the reader. As the reader, this is, Mood is the feeling created All right, the mood is the feeling created for the reader. So how is it written and how is it supposed to make you feel as you're reading? And this is done or recognized. Recognized through details. That the author includes. All right. So these are recognized through details that the author includes. And these two, again, go together because much like tone, the mood has to be inferred. You have to make an inference. You have to make an inference or an educated guess based on the details that the author has. And so some examples let me draw that there. Alright, so some examples of mood. Uh, these could be gloomy. You know, the author could create a, a gloomy scene. Um, it could be Joyful. It could be designed to make you feel happy. It could be morbid. Uh, what else? Comical. It could make you laugh. Um, so these are all, or mysterious. Mysterious is a common one. But these are all different types of moods. And so again, a lot of times, there's confusion about which is which. So if you remember, T, the author, M, me, the reader, um, you can better identify the difference between the two. And so, for example, the author may write a text uh, that is, you know, real seriously discussing the election, for example. Uh, and it could be either side. This is nonpartisan. An, an article about the election it's seriously written. You can tell um, the author is discussing what's important, what could happen. He's very serious about it, um, about how this could end up. And the mood uh, could be, it could create a, a, a gloomy mood. It, it could be, the author could be seriously discussing that neither option is good or that one option is bad and, and, and one option is good. And it could still create that gloomy mood because the reader starts to worry what happens if this person wins um, and all of the serious things that the author discussed becomes true. And so that's the way that tone and mood go together. At the same time, the author could be paranoid about something and create a uh, create all of these conspiracy theories about things that are going on, and that creates a morbid mood. The, the reader is like, wait, what is happening? What is real? What is not? Um, creates that morbid uh, mood. Uh, the author could be discussing something very playfully, um, something that they like, something that that they're, they're very happy and, and playful about, and that creates your comical mood. So again, you can see that the author's tone uh, does affect the reader's mood, but the, the importance is understanding the difference between the two. How does the author feel about it? And what does he do to make the reader feel? Or what, 
you know, what details does he provide to uh, change how the reader feels? And so a lot of times you'll see how does paragraph two affect the, how does paragraph two of the text affect the reader's mood? So you go back and you read paragraph two and, and you look at the details provided and you know, are the details good things or the details bad things. And that will determine, you know, is it designed to create a, a put the reader in a good mood? Is it designed to put the reader in a bad mood, an angry mood, a happy mood, a sad, depressed mood? These are these are all things. You could also see how does paragraph two um, solidify the tone and, and you're you got to go back. and You got to read paragraph two. And you got to know that the tone of the entire article is serious. And then what does paragraph two do to show that the, the tone is a serious one? And so it's important to understand both and to understand the difference between the two. But we're going to stop here for today. You guys do have an article. You're going to practice this. Uh, it is on Canvas. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Email, phone. Teams, whatever you need to do, reach out. Let me know if you need assistance. And as always, have a great day.